Hey everyone, in the news this week, a new blood test can apparently diagnose Alzheimer's disease 30 years in advance, I guess if that's the sort of thing you want to look forward to. Parents in Wales are no longer entitled to smack, apparently, which is good news, I guess, for Class A drug users elsewhere. And talking of which, Taylor Hawkins from the band The Foo Fighters just died. He was a drummer and he was in Colombia, so you can probably guess the rest of that story. Anyway, this week there was a G20 conference to discuss the Ukraine situation, and as expected, it was about as useful as air conditioning on a motorbike. Russia, which classes itself as a superpower, is somehow managing to lose a war to a ragtag collection of amateurs and even children who've been allowed to put down the Xbox controllers in favour of actual military-grade weapons. I saw a kid on the news who couldn't have been much over the age of seven running around with an MP5 machine gun, and I was fairly glad my son didn't get any ideas of what he wants for Christmas. Mind you, it is a good example of how it might be relatively simple enough to beat a standing army, but you know, a determined populace and an insurrection, that's next to impossible to defeat. If Ukraine was an animal, it'd be a cat with nine lives. Talking of which, I remember many years ago phoning a vet in order to get my elderly cat put down and the receptionist told me I'd have to make nine appointments. Hashtag expensive. I suppose the one positive thing you can say about Vladimir is that at least he's been one of the most effective geography teachers in years, with random folk down the pub now able to talk chapter and verse about cities that nobody would have heard of six months ago, although it might all be a waste of time if he ends up levelling the place and those cities no longer exist. Currently there's a strong possibility of that being the end outcome, with huge stretches of no man's land being given up in exchange for Russia being allowed to annex the Donbass region, all fairly similar to what played out in Cyprus 50 years ago. That is an outrageously ironic situation given how many Russian oligarchs hold a Cypriot passport in order to gain their EU citizenship. On the meanwhile, Western companies are facing demands not to sell their products in Russia. Curiously, the tobacco industry are the latest folks to talk about pulling out of Russia, which makes you wonder whose side they're really on. The tobacco industry surely kills more Russians every year than the Ukrainian army could ever dream of. Between that and McDonald's exiting Russia, we may see the life expectancy jump 10 years, or it may all turn out very ugly. Literally, Botox manufacturer Abvi has decided to cease operations there altogether. Perhaps that will be the final twist of the screw that finally drags the shiny and suspiciously smooth-skinned Vladimir Putin to the negotiating table. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.